Welcome to another edition of Horse Center, everyone. I am Brian Zipsy, and as always, I have the excellent pleasure of being joined by my co-host to the East Coast. That's Matt Shipman. How are you today, Matt? I am good, Brian. How are you? I can't believe it's September already. Saratoga's closed. We're on our way to the next big thing, the Breeders' Cup. The next big thing, yeah. Well, before that, Matt, I want to wish someone a very happy birthday today. It's not me, it's not you, but it's Horse Center. Woohoo! Happy birthday to Horse Center. Ten years, ten years old is this show, Matt. Uh, I couldn't think of a better partner wow. to be doing it with all these years. But happy birthday to Horse Center. Ten years old today. It's like a gelding that just keeps going and winning major graded stakes, probably on the turf. <laughs> At at this point, Brian, probably yes. Uh, mm -hmm. We couldn't uh, we couldn't do it. We wouldn't be able to keep doing it for all these years if we didn't have such a great audience. That's right. That's right. Blame it on the. I mean, thank you to the audience. All right, here we go. Yeah, it's it's a Breeders' Cup show, Matt. It's a Breeders' Cup preview show. We're going to dive into two big races. I think the two most anticipated races probably right now, and they're the Breeders' Cup Classic for sure. And the Breeders' Cup Distaff. Let's start with the classic. And we're going to look at, I think, I think people are starting to truly believe that the American three-year-olds are better than the American older horses. Would you agree, Matt Schiffman? I would. You know, this is certainly a very different kind of uh, Breeders' Cup classic uh, uh, this year with uh, the three-year-olds being the best horses I mean, you know, there have been great three-year-olds. There have been three-year-olds that have won the Classic over the years. There was a stretch of three years in a row not too long ago when three-year-olds won, including uh, uh, including American Pharaoh. But uh, I, I don't remember, Brian, ever a year where uh, the three-year-olds are the best American horses. And, you know, honestly, uh, the, the older horse group is uh, – uh, is a particularly thin group. Yeah, thin thin is one word. Uh, inconsistent is another word. Um, however, I wouldn't throw them out. We're going to talk about the American older horses in a bit, but let's start with these three-year-olds that you've done a good job of pumping up. Fierceness, uh, if you ended the three-year-old male Eclipse Award, if you ended maybe even the Horse of the Year, uh award right now fierceness is is certainly in line for one if not both of those the son of city of light got it done in that big race at saratoga the travers his second win of the year his third graded stakes win of the year his second grade one of the year fierceness already has gone out to california and won a breeders cup can he do it again matt shipman uh, hey uh why not brian he seems to be uh uh, obviously, in the best form of his life, he seems to have matured uh, uh, and uh, certainly seems to love racing at Saratoga. But like you said, if if you, if, he, if you're quick to say, oh, it's just because of Saratoga, now he's got to go across the country. He already went across the country to, to win the Breeders' Cup Juvenile last year. So um, fierceness right now uh, deserves to be at the top of this list. He does, and, and he's proven himself now at a mile and a quarter. As much as I thought that Travers was the race of the year for a few different reasons, this could be even tougher. Uh, next on the list, Matt, is Doorknock, son of good magic. Don't forget that Doorknock was the leader of the three-year-old male division uh, just a couple weeks ago. Didn't get it done in the Travers. I, I thought he was just a little headstrong uh, in the first uh, part of the race and really came up empty when fierceness came knocking on his door as they were straightening out in the Saratoga stretch. I don't see any reason why Dornock, who's already a big winner at a mile and a quarter, though, couldn't turn things around. Delmar's a track that most of the horses we're going to talk about today have never run on. Dornock could bounce back, Matt. Yeah, why not, Brian? Uh, certainly has run uh, 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 good enough races in the past. To, to be a contender in the classic, I, I'm sure. I, I assume he's going to have some time uh, and train up to the race, giving him a little break after you know he he ran some some tough races, competitive races, big races this summer. 
Yeah, absolutely. And and uh, we, and, and I mean, collectively, uh, uh, betters and fans of horse racing tend to jump back and forth a little bit with one race. And we're doing that a little bit with Fierceness and Doorknock, but Fierceness clearly better in the Travers. Next horse on the list was in the Travers as well, Matt. Sierra Leone. Uh, Sierra Leone was a surprising favorite in the Travers. And again, he didn't run a bad race. He didn't necessarily get the pace that he wanted there, he he might see that pace, that faster pace in the Breeders' Cup Classic. Yeah, that's for sure. And, you know, uh, at this point, uh, Chad Brown uh, isn't hesitating to say that Saratoga didn't seem to the racing surf, surface that Sierra, Sierra Leone has liked the most. Yeah, uh, well, three straight losses. Again, running good races. But, uh, yeah, 0 for 3 at Saratoga this year for Sierra Leone. Uh, next on our list, I think, is a horse that could be, could become one of the favorites on Breeders' Cup Classic Day. That's dependent on what happens next time. It looks like it's going to be the California uh, California crown, not the Pennsylvania Derby, but that's still a little bit up in the air for, for Muth. Muth, uh, another son of good magic, Matt, he returned to win the shared belief recently one mile at Del Mar. It was his first race since the Arkansas Derby way back in the early spring. He's three for three this year in stakes races. Yeah. You know, you, you got to think back and, and, and get to that point where you realize that he is three for three. He had, had the good races on the, on the Derby trail. And after the Arkansas Derby, he's just had, you know, one, one little thing after another it took him a while to get back to the races. We'll see now after that win uh, uh, at Del Mar uh, last weekend, if he can keep it going and if he can go these next couple months without any other problems popping up. Yeah. And, and I'm not even sure to tell you the truth, what all those problems were. I know he missed, the Preakness after he got sick as, as the morning line favorite for the Preakness, but he had a steady flow of works before finally showing up in the shared belief. I wasn't blown away by his performance at Del Mar in the shared belief, but on the other hand, he did what he had to do and he was clearly best in that listed stakes uh, race out there. Next horse on the list, maybe not as big a name as the four above him, but I think Dragoon Guard deserves to be on this list, getting better and better, the son of Arrogate, Matt, he's four for four this year, coming off two of those smaller derby wins, the Indiana Derby, the West Virginia Derby. Looks like he's going to get his grade one shot in the Pennsylvania Derby, which could very well set up a classic run. Yeah, uh, and uh, trainer Brad Cox won the Pennsylvania Derby uh, last year, uh, and, and Dragoon Guard uh, is similar to his winner last year in that he is – in Cox's second or third wave of uh, quality three-year-olds uh, this year. Uh, lost just his very first debut race in uh, Maiden Special Weight and won everything else since then. Yeah, yeah. And that was actually a good performance, his lone race as a two-year-old when he just barely got beat by a, a classy sprinter. Uh, four for four this year, as we said, uh, Matt was talking about Saudi Crown, who won the Pennsylvania Derby and then ran – at least he ran early in the Breeders' Cup Classic. He wasn't doing too much down the stretch in that one. All right, Matt, let's jump to the next wave of, again, horses that I think will be thought of as serious contenders in here. So, again, we're going to skip the American older males who have pretty well dominated the Breeders' Cup Classic over the years, but not right now as far as interest in 2024. So we're going to go to the international runners, and this has never been such a deep cast, Matt. We're going to start with City of Troy, and I think City of Troy is probably getting the most worldwide uh, attention, and for good reason. Uh, he is the top-rated horse in the world rankings, the three-year-old son of Justify, of course, the American Triple Crown winner of six years ago, trained by Aiden O'Brien. He's won a ton of races in America, a bunch of Breeders' Cup races, but has never won the Breeders' Cup Classic. He'll try to do it this year with a horse with some dirt breeding, and who's coming off three big Group 1 wins over in Europe. Yep, three big Group 1 wins, uh, seven starts in his career, six wins, certainly an extremely talented horse, uh, uh, and he will have to uh, rely on that justify blood 
and see if he uh, can take it onto the main track. But yeah, it, it looks like this year, this deep group of uh, older, uh, mostly older uh, horses from the international trainers uh, taking the place of the older Americans. Yeah, to, to, to some extent. City of Troy, they'll, they'll be doing their best to have him ready, uh, uh, run, uh, working on different surfaces over there, bringing in American-style gait, uh, bringing in fast horses for him to work in little mini races, uh, getting ready, having him most ready as he could be. Will he be able to beat the best dirt horses in the world? That's a big question mark, but City of Troy is certainly an excellent horse. Two-year-old champion last year in Europe. Another big name on this list, Matt, Forever Young. That's on a real steal. Yahagi had him come over for the Kentucky Derby after a series of wins in Japan, Saudi Arabia, and Dubai. Undefeated when he got here for the Kentucky Derby, and he ran a big race. It says third, but uh, it, it was a narrow loss and a troubled loss in the Kentucky Derby. Yeah, absolutely, Brian. Uh, that's his only loss. Uh, talented three-year-old uh he uh came over and and you know looks like we were gonna have a japanese winner there for a little bit uh but uh as you said it was pretty much a blanket finish he finished third wasn't allowed to hang around in the country he had to you know quarantine rules and 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 stuff that i don't really know all the details he had to go back to japan but we had in a race since that Kentucky Derby, can he, you know, uh, uh, can he be ready for the Breeders' Cup? Yeah, well, these these Asian horses, Matt, uh, they really work up to um, the, the winter race, big way, big races late in the year in Japan, and then early races into Dubai. So uh, that that that's what he was doing uh, up until the Kentucky Derby. So he had a pretty long stretch of important races that he did very well in. They always plan to give him a break, and they're bringing him back in a uh, in a pretty big dirt race in Japan uh, in a few weeks, October two. So Forever Young will have that prep race, his first race since the Kentucky Derby, before coming over to Del Mar. And remember what the Japanese horses did at Del Mar last time there was a Breeders' Cup there. So Forever Young, one to watch. Two more Japanese horses we need to talk about, and we're familiar with Derma Sotogaki. Last year's runner-up in the Breeders' Cup Classic, Matt. Uh, when last seen, he was sixth in the Dubai World Cup. He'll have a prep race uh, in, in September, uh, and he'll probably face off with Ushba Tesaro, who's the Dubai World Cup winner of a couple years ago. Both of them came over for the Breeders' Cup Classic last year. Ushba didn't run badly, but Derma Sotogaki was even better in the Breeders' Cup Classic at Santa Anita behind White Abario. Yep, uh, he certainly ran a really good race uh, when he was second in the Breeders' Cup Classic last year. He did that off of a long layoff, Brian. Uh, uh, so uh, I'm sure with this prep race coming up that he's going to be ready to go. Uh, um, I, I know he's been running against top competition, but it should be noted that his last win was back in 2023 in the UAE Derby. Yeah, yeah, and and I, I think just the fact that he ran so well in the Breeders' Cup Classic last year will make him one of the horses that uh, gets that will be under 10 to 1 and a horse to watch. It'll be interesting to see how both him and Ushba Tesoro look in this uh, race that, again, they, they both, both connections are saying that they are going to use the same race in late September in Japan as a prep this year for the Breeders' Cup Classic. Ushba Tesoro, on the other hand, is, is a true... Uh, distance horse, a true mile and a quarter horse. He's proven it several times, and I, I would be at all surprised if he improved on his performance of last year in the Breeders' Cup. Yeah, seven year old now, Brian, uh, with 11 career wins, has won a ton of money, $16 million in his career. Quality, quality horse. The last horse on our list is uh, a little bit lesser known, but if you've been paying attention, Factor Cheval has been running some good races, has the son of Ribchester. Uh, this is uh, uh, ownership that we've uh, seen before, of course. Uh, Animal Kingdom uh, uh, group is uh, involved, and, and they want to bring over this horse who's doing very well with a win in the Dubai turf earlier this year and a very good third last time in the Sussex Stakes 
We'll see if he can translate that form to dirt in the Classic. Yep, a five-year-old now had a big win at Royal Ascot uh, in June. Yeah, he's he's going well ever since uh, ever since that Dubai Turf win. So uh, an interesting horse there as well. Just adding to the international cast that we already know so so much about. I mentioned White Barrio uh, uh, briefly as last year's Breeders' Cup Classic winner. It certainly doesn't look like he's going to be ready for the Breeders' Cup Classic this year, nor will we see Mystic Dan, the Kentucky Derby winner, who won't be rushed back and is looking forward to a four-year-old season. Both of those horses are uh, coming back at some point soon, just not Breeders' Cup Classic ready. With that said, let's look at our last list for the Breeders' Cup Classic, Matt. And the first name there, I think, is the most interesting name on this older Americans list because next is a very interesting horse. Trainer Doug Cowens has this son not of not this time doing so well since he accidentally found a dirt distance race uh, when a turf race was taken off the turf at Delaware Park. Next has been a monster running in marathon races from 11 furlongs and up ever since. He's winning races by 10, 15, 20 lengths. I thought he was ultra impressive when he shortened down to 11 furlongs in the Brooklyn. Looks like he'll be at parks for their big day of racing in a couple weeks for the Greenwood Cup at a mile and a half. But I have a feeling that Doug Cowens and team is going to give next a shot in the Breeders' Cup Classic, but still a big question mark. Yeah, absolutely a big question mark, no doubt. Uh, all, all of those dominating wins in the marathon races are just so much fun. They're fun to watch. It's fun to see uh, the wins pile up for this uh, uh, for this uh, interesting horse. But yeah, uh, that's a big step up to go uh, and face uh, uh, more of the general population of quality horses. Uh, uh, going the 10 furlong distance we know the distance is going to be an issue but a whole different world but i'm excited to see it yeah i'm excited to see it too if they decide to go that route and for comparison's sake in that 11 furlong uh brooklyn he completely dominated croupy and and, and croupy looked pretty good rallying up for second in the whitney so something to think about there biggest issue i think for him this is a horse they want to run next year and maybe two years uh so they don't want to push them too hard this would be a big test if they did do, do decide to go i think the biggest question for him would be the early pace because he likes to stay close in those long races lope along early and then just dominate the horses the last three-eighths of a mile as he as he romps by who knows how many lengths he won't see a easy early pace in the breeders cup classic for sure all right, Matt, uh, next horse on the list is Highland Falls. We did not pick him to win the Breeders' Cup Classic. I've long thought this son of Curlin and Round Pond, what a nice mare Round Pond yeah. was. It, it, it could be a very good horse. He finally proved it in grade one style in the Jockey Club Gold Cup. Yep, and and uh, it's been the theme with the older horses all year long, taking turns. Who's, uh, who's the most recent winner? And uh, Highland Falls is the most recent recent winner uh, uh son of curlin for brad cox hey it was a nice victory it really was in the jockey club, club gold cup he did not allow arthur's ride to get a loose easy lead and, and coming down the stretch he was the one that was uh running yeah it, we can talk a little bit about arthur's ride now too highland falls what a great ride by Flavian Pratt. Flavian Pratt did a few things, and I don't know if anybody, everybody noticed what he did, but he pushed Highland Falls a little bit early where it became harder for Arthur's ride and Junior Alvarado to get to the lead. After he made him work from the outside to get to the lead and cut over, Highland Falls uh, Pratt took Highland Falls back just for a second to let Arthur's ride get to the rail. And then Pratt swung him outside and asked him for a little bit more speed to get up to Arthur's ride and to pressure him the whole way around. I don't think that's what Arthur's ride wants. I think Arthur's ride is a different kind of horse where once he's loping along, maybe somewhat like next, when he's loping along comfortable, he's a really good horse. When he's got a horse at his throat, he doesn't really want to stick around. Maybe I'm just telling you what I saw in this last race, but watching Arthur's ride his whole career, 
Uh, that's what I think about him. Really talented, but he doesn't want that kind of pressure. Great job by Flavian Pratt and great job by Highland Falls to be able to do those things and then put them away in the stretch. They weren't finishing fast, Matt, in that Jockey Club Gold Cup. 27 for the last quarter mile. Another reason why we may like the three-year-olds in international horses better. But uh, you can't throw out either Highland Falls or Arthur's Rock. No, absolutely not, Brian. But again, you know, uh, uh, who knows what will happen in the next start? Who knows what's going to happen when they're facing, going to face the toughest field of their careers? Absolutely. Next horse on the list is an interesting horse, Senior Buscador. We've been talking about him since uh, the Springboard Mile as a two-year-old way back when at Remington Park. And he just gets a little bit better every year. You saw it late last year, and you certainly saw it overseas this year with big races in Saudi Arabia especially and a pretty darn good race in Dubai. Tim, uh, Todd Fincher gave him some time off. I almost said Todd Pletcher. <laughs> Todd Fincher gave him some time off, and he brought him back in a seven furlong race that didn't turn out to be quite the setup, or or, 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 or maybe it was two, two good sprinters just beating him at their game and not his. But he, he finished fourth in that Pat O'Brien, and probably a good prep, and We'll see what he can do if he can move forward in the California Cup and uh, or California Crown, and uh, and become another real threat. We know he can go ten furlongs. Yeah, and you know, good strategy. Uh, you know, uh, seven for seven furlongs. That's not his cup of tea, but give him a race over the Del Mar course. Yeah, and and I've seen him in, in one turn races where they set up for him do well, but uh, it, it was truly a prep, and he'll get one more before the Breeders' Cup Classic. We expect Senor Buscudor to be in the Classic. I, I'm really not so sure about next, and I'm especially not sure about National Treasure, Matt. National Treasure, of course, has two big wins in America, the Pegasus World Cup before going overseas, and then the Met Mile after. His Whitney was not good. He never got out near the lead to give any pressure to Arthur's ride, and I don't think he's the kind of horse who wants to, wants to pass a bunch of horses. If he's on the lead, I think he's tough. But I think the Breeders' Cup Dirt Mile after the Whitney is probably the more likely spot for him. Yeah, and and you know I I don't know what to, what to expect from National Treasure. Obviously, uh, uh, he did very little running in the Whitney, so we'll have to see if uh, if he can rebound. Yeah, his next race, which is expected to be against Muth and and Senior Buscador, will tell us a little story. But I, I can't throw him out. I mean, he is a solid, solid speed horse if they decide to go for the classic. We already talked about Arthur's ride. Let's go to Mixto, Matt. Mixto is the uh, the hottest horse in America. He's got a one-race winning streak. It was a million bucks, and it was grade one at Del Mar over the Breeders' Cup Classic uh, track, uh, over 20 to 1. Nice story for Kyle Frey, uh, a guy who spent a lot of time in Northern California, to come down and give Mixto an absolutely perfect ride to win it. He's now two of fourteen lifetime for trainer Doug O'Neill. Yeah, and I guess, I guess it kind of sums up what we've been saying about the uh, about the older division of American horses, where uh, uh, the next up horse uh, is the one that we're talking about that uh, that Mixto only a maiden victory on his resume was able to win the Pacific classic. Yeah. Yeah. It, it, it doesn't speak too highly of the classic, but uh, we know Mixo will be in the field. If, if he's healthy, he'll be in, he gets in off that Pacific classic win. Matt, let's turn to the girls now and look at this distaff field. We only have one page for the distaff much simpler. Uh, I ran a poll recently on Twitter, or I guess it's still is running and torpedo. Anna was a runaway favorite. I'm a torpedo Anna nut, as you know, Matt. I uh, thought she ran a super race in the Travers last time. She'll run in the Cotillion before the Breeders' Cup distaff this year. Um, I, I was fine with seeing her so dominantly ahead in the poll because because I love her. But on the other hand, this is uh, this is no slam dunk for that really really good three zero filly because there's a bunch of good horses, older horses uh, that she'll have to face for the first time in this Breeders' Cup distaff. It right, Brian. It is a good field. It's a field uh, of uh, of horses that we have seen uh, win big races. Horses that we saw in the distaff last year. 
uh, uh, run really well. Um, but I, I we're talking about Thorpedo Anna here. She's going to be a big favorite in the distaff, and deservedly so. Yeah, she's a sensational three-year-old filly. She's shown that in all five of her races this year. Idiomatic, on the other hand, Matt, uh, we've seen a chink in the armor, perhaps. Uh, she's two of four this year after a pretty easy win at Churchill Downs. Uh, she's lost two of her last three, but both of those races at Saratoga, I tell you what, they were good performances. She did everything but win. The champion, the defending champion of this race, I can't throw an idiomatic. She'll be in the spinster next. No, absolutely not, Brian. I don't, you know, uh, those last two performances were really good. Didn't didn't get the wins, but I don't know. There's no reason to to assume that uh, uh, she's not going to be able to uh, win another distaff this year. Yeah, absolutely. Idiomatic, a big threat, despite coming off that loss last time. Adair Manor is a big threat. Not a, it, it, we both said she's better than ever when she won the Clement Hirsch for the second straight time. Uh, earlier this summer, she was scratched out of the Pacific Classic last time, which puts a little wrench in there. We'll see. They said she tied up a little bit after working or galloping. It's a question mark for the da daughter of Uncle Mo, but if it's just a, a temporary, a small setback, she can jump right in and and maybe be uh, one of the horses to beat, if if not the, the top competition to the three-year-old. Yeah, uh, she's she has won three races in a row. She has won 10 races in her career. Uh, remembering, though, that in the distaff, last year she finished, really didn't do too much running. But right now, the the issue with their manner is, you know, uh, after tying up, uh, you know, is is she going to be able to be ready for uh, the clan, for the distaff? Yeah, a little bit of a question mark. On the other hand, uh, she, last year she was seventh, but she was beaten just over three lengths. I wouldn't give her too hard a time there, but she wasn't as good as Idiomatic or Randomized, certainly. Uh, the other, On the other hand, it looks like she likes Delmar. Maybe Delmar's her favorite track, in fact, so something to think about as well. When Idiomatic was battling on the lead in the personal ensign, uh, you were looking for a horse to rally, Matt, and, and Raging Sea came running. The daughter of Curlin is getting better. Was that race strictly set up by the pace, or is Raging Sea getting to the point where she's in the running to be the best older female in the country? I don't know, Brian. She's got a pretty good resume. Uh, uh, has won four out of five races uh, recently. Won the personal ensign before that. Won the Shoe V uh, um, from the Bard of Chad Brown. Uh, Chad Brown has a fantastic record in the breeders cup winning a whole bunch of races at the world championships in in just a short period of time yeah and raging sea might get a favorable setup in here with uh probably a lot of speed again in this breeders cup classic breeders cup dista uh the other chad brown horse on the list matt i don't think we can throw out either remember how well randomized ran when she went to the west coast last year and just missed in the Breeders' Cup distaff as a three-year-old. She's been a little bit up and down this year, has randomized. But, uh, uh, you know, I, I, the personal ensign did not go the way she wanted. I, I thought she had even a tougher job than Idiomatic early. And it showed down the stretch as Idiomatic just put her away pretty easily. She could bounce back. Certainly could. Uh, the, you know, things didn't go her way in the uh, personal ensign. It was a tough field, uh, uh, but she was second in that distaff last year. I think those are the top five Americans, or at least the top five Americans we've been watching for a year or more. Uh, after that, it gets a little bit questionable if, if they're true Breeders' Cup distaff uh, win candidates or not. But let's talk about some of these. Hope Road um, showed a little bit of promise as a two-year-old for trainer Bob Baffert. But this year, she's been really good. Three for three. Two sprints. Last time in the Tory Pond, she got a mile. A uh, huge step up in class if she wants to win the Breeders' Cup distaff. But the way she's running this year, we have to mention her. Yep, daughter of Quality Road. Baffert certainly got her uh, at the peak of her form with the three wins in a row. Power Squeeze has won five stakes races this year. That's that's pretty good for trainer Jorge Delgado, Matt. Last time was the grade one Alabama. In her other two races this year, Torpedo Anna beat her badly. 
Power Squeeze will take one more shot or maybe two more shots if she ends up in the Breeders' Cup distaff at Torpedo Anna. She'll take another shot immediately, though, in the Cotillion. I don't think she's good enough to compete with Torpedo Anna and the rest, but five stakes wins and in Alabama, that's pretty good. It sure is, Brian. I uh, wouldn't mind uh, having a horse like that in my barn. Uh, uh, yeah, 10 career starts, six wins, a second and a third. Uh, so uh, she shows up. But, yeah, Brian, we're, we're, we're talking about tough spots coming up if if she runs into uh, Thorpedo Anna in the Cotillion and then tries to go on to the distaff. Exactly. Next on our list is the Canadian bred. Caitlin, her greatness, of course, named after Caitlin Clark, Matt. Omaha Beach is her sire. Kevin Attard is her trainer. She ran a very good race to be second in the Woodbine Oaks before wearing down the favorite in the mile and a quarter Kings Plate. A good win. Uh, I think they want more big races for Caitlin, her graces, greatness. She's got some dirt form. I just don't know if she's good enough in this bunch. Right, but hey, Brian, she beat the boys in the first leg of the Canadian Triple Crown. Uh, that's a feather in her cap. A feather in her cap. And last on our list, Matt, might be one of the more dangerous horses on the list. Last time we had the Breeders' Cup at Del Mar, Japan took home two big wins, including the Breeders' Cup distap. This year, it looks like they're coming with a pretty big gun and awesome result. Another, another uh, justify. Another justified, just like City of Troy. This is a Japanese four-year-old filly. She's seven for seven lifetime match. She runs a distance all the time. She's running between nine furlongs, a mile and a quarter, and even more over there. She won recently for her seventh straight win. She is pointed to the Breeders' Cup this time. I tell you, Brian, that's a that's a heck of a record in the way the Japanese horses are coming and competing against international uh, uh, fields against and, and against the american horses uh we we you have to seriously consider this horse yeah i, I she could be right up there with uh idiomatic and, and uh, uh adair manor as uh the next horses that in the breeders cup this time matt our birthday show our 10-year horse center birthday show some people will call it an anniversary but we're we're all about horse center so we're calling it a birthday 10 years old can I get a parting shot from you, my friend? Ten years, Brian. That's pretty. Uh, that's pretty amazing. I guess that makes us the uh, the next of uh, racing shows. Uh, we have gone the distance, the long distance. But I'll tell you, uh, doing the rundown of these races has me a little bit excited for uh, uh, the Pennsylvania Derby uh, card coming up at Parks in a few weeks with the likes of. Uh, Torpedo Anna and, and 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 other horses that we have mentioned uh, in, in the show. Yeah, well, ne next in the Greenwood Cup, I think, and uh, one of um, Bookham Dano's owners uh, told me that the uh, Gallant Bob is is certainly on the radar of uh, Bookham Dano, so we could see some big names, and it looks like a pretty good um, competitive. Uh, Pennsylvania Derby as well. So big day. That's two weeks. Next week, we'll be talking turf, though, at Woodbine, led by the Woodbine Mile. As always, folks, we appreciate you watching the show. Uh, we hope you're still watching 15 years from now when uh, Horse Center has its 25th birthday. Uh, if you haven't yet subscribed, go ahead and do that to our YouTube channel here at Horse Racing Nation. Turn on your notifications. Leave us a comment. Wish us happy birthday if you'd like. We'd, we'd appreciate it. Thanks to our sponsor, Derby Wars, the best contest set out there. From Matt and I, we wish you a good week. Good luck. We'll see you next week right here on Horse.